What do you guys see that makes you laugh here? What's, what's the humorous part about this? This is, and, and I understand why we have the escalator. It's essential. We should have it for people that need it. But you guys see this at the gym. People are fighting for the first, the first parking spot. They're riding up the escalator. I mean, these guys, they're in pretty good shape. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is kind of what our, our fitness has, has fallen to. But there are natural ways. There are things we're going to cover today that can really get you guys to a higher level. They can make it easier and simpler. Um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty funny, though. So let's go to the next slide. So how does all this work? What are the three modes of exercise? Because the majority of us, we've been exercising, almost 80% of people in our country, they stay in the cardio aerobic training zone. And what do they notice after doing the same workout for, the, for like two or three months? No results. You get stuck. You hit a, you hit a level. Um, you'll see a lot of people who, who they, they might run marathons, but they still have the pooch, the little the thing there. I mean, so how is it working? That's what the things that you guys, I know a lot of you guys, you, you look at results. So no matter what you're doing, how are your results working? So we're going to talk about the three different types. There are strengths. There's benefits. There's good things about every type of exercise you're doing. We're going to show you the strengths. We're going to show you maybe the weaknesses of some of them and how to combine them in a short amount of time to get great results. Okay? Almost all this stuff, if you want to know where to find more resources, is on our website. We have, we have things going on. We have the vids video will be on the website. Our goal is to make it a, a resource so you can go there, you can get pointers, you can come ask me questions, and we can help you advance your health. So let's go to the next guy. Um, so resistance strength training. This one is one of the most essential ones. We all have to be doing this. We all have to. There's no, there's no way we cannot make it without it. So this one is, is so important. Um, basically, what are we talking about here? What's resistance to strength training? What do you guys think? Weights, beautiful. We've got to be doing weights or universal machine or pull downs, something of that nature where we're really exercising the muscles. Um, hormone wise, because hormones are important. This is something that's been left out of healthcare for a long time, is actually explaining these things, these things to you. Um, the growth hormone that it releases is huge. It's so important. It's essential, you can see here, for mobilization of fat. So if you're not doing this, if you're just doing aerobic, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get the same fat burning. You're not going to get the same, basically, development. Um, so when is growth hormone the most? Growth hormone the most? You can see it there. It's in the morning. When's the best time to work out? Yeah, if, if you're going to follow this way. Um, so how does this affect your body when you have the growth hormone released? It's essential. If you're not doing this type of exercise, you're definitely shortchanging yourself. So we're going to go to the next one. Um, yeah. So what are the benefits of having more muscle? Why do we want to do this? Muscle burns more calories. Beautiful. So you're going to have a, they talk about your, your basal metabolic rate, your resting rate. Um, it's going to be elevated. So all day you're going to be burning more, more calories, the more muscle you have, which is a huge benefit. Also, you guys can see up there, it's good for, for strengthening and for tightness and for being toned. Um, yeah. It's pretty simple. What about testosterone? Because all the women see testosterone and they're like, we can't have testosterone. Do we all have testosterone in our body? Mm -hmm. Men and women? A lot of you guys are medical experts and you, I know you guys have a lot of training in it. For sure we do. This testosterone, this isn't like going you know, off the charts. This is what your body needs to really change, to really develop muscles, to really shed the fat. So um, this is pretty awesome stuff. So yeah, resistance, we just went through, let's go to the next one, sorry. Um, benefit wise, like you guys just said, it's gonna increase your, your, your resting metabolic rate. I'm going to increase your, your muscle there. Bone density, what does that have to do with anything? You get older, your bones become mm -hmm. dense. Right, more. exactly. So what if you're just doing pool exercise? So we have a lot of people who, they, they get a little bit further in the years, and they're like, well, you can't do exercise. You've got to go in the pool. Does that do anything for building bone mass? Mm -hmm. Not at all. So it's essential. So if you're somebody who, who wants to build bone mass, who wants to prevent osteoporosis, who wants to age with good posture, um, this is something you have to do. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple. It's actually quite fun. Um, let's go to the next one. So this is kind of, we're going through some of the studies too. So you guys, a lot of you guys are, are I know you're, you're very educated, so you want to hear about, well, what kind of studies are we talking about here? So when we look at it, we tried to figure out the predictor of, of your metabolic rate, like how fast you're going to burn calories, you're going to burn energy. So they said regardless of whether you're a guy or a girl, it wasn't sex, it wasn't any of that stuff. It was based on your muscle mass. So your muscle mass is one of the best indicators in terms of how healthy you're going to be and how long you're going to live. So some of this stuff, it seems like, oh, we're just talking about exercise. It can transform your health. It can help you live longer. And why is your health important to you? Yeah, what if you lose your health? Who does it affect? Does it affect just you? Does it affect your family, your children, your grandchildren, your everything? So your health is, is a huge priority. Um, what are they talking about in terms of sugar burners? 
Have you guys heard my lecture about sugar burners versus fat burners? It's kind, of, it's kind of a cool thing. So you're either a sugar burner. Typically, if you're a sugar burner, you crave sugar all the time. You eat your sugar, your body feels better, you have this like spike in energy, and then you have that crash. You eat lunch, you spike energy until like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, and you crash. So sugar burners, you're going to notice that. You're addicted to sweets, you're addicted to sugars, your body's always craving it. How about fat burners? What's the difference? They eat a lot of good fats. What are we talking about for good fats? Olive oil is an excellent one. Avocado, Avocado good. Coconut, coconut oil, cold water fish, grass-fed meat. So here, I mean, we recommend all the good fats you can get. The higher, the better, usually. With being a fat burner, your metabolism, your energy, is going to stay steady throughout the day. You're going to notice you don't have the ups and downs. You're going to notice you're energized. In terms of your workouts, your workouts are going to be better because you're not going to have those days. You guys know if you work out a lot, you get, you just go and you're like completely fatigued. It's probably because you're a sugar burner. So some of these simple changes, if you want resources on it, we have the basic diet on the website, we have the healing diet. I like to explain it all. We're not going to get into a ton of nutrition today, but we do want you to know about that. Um, so how about resistance training in terms of glucose tolerance? What does that have to do with diabetes? Well, if the glucose, um, you have your insulin, and if it's being blocked from all the fat, yeah. So just like you're saying, it's kind of neat too to see diabetics who are able to now control their diabetes without taking insulin. Or they look at their, yeah, <laughs> we've had people who've come off their medications, not because we told them to, but because their doctor said, hey, your levels have done so much better. Or you look at leptin, which is a hormone, that was one of the first slides we skipped through, but um, leptin-wise, you can test for leptin. It's a hormone that typically is off before insulin's off. So you can say, all right, my leptin level should be in this range, I think it's four to six, when it goes higher, you can say, all right, well, I'm having leptin resistance. That goes before insulin resistance. So now there's ways to tell where you fall. So you can say, all right, my leptin level is elevated. This hormone's important for testosterone. It's important for female hormones. It's important for all these thyroid hormones. Wow, I can change my diet. I can change the way my body works. They can retest me for leptin, and it makes sense. These hormones finally make sense. So that's what we're talking about. Is that pretty powerful? I think it's pretty cool, because you can, you can, in advance, start to prevent things. You don't have to wait to fall apart. Um, what about insulin receptors? They can come back. You guys may have seen Raw for 30 Days, a video we play here. They take six diabetics, four type 2, two type 1, and they actually reverse their diabetes. They do it with raw foods and exercise. If they threw in chiropractic, it would be a perfect, perfect combo. But anyways, um, what about metabolic afterburn? Kind of like we were talking about earlier. It depends on your exercise. You can have a metabolic afterburn with a proper exercise where you have more stuff burning for the rest of the day and some of the next day. That's pretty huge. How about cardio? We're all told that's what we're supposed to do, right? A workout doesn't, it's not good unless it hurts, unless it takes an hour, right? If you don't have an hour, you're, you're, you're not doing anything, right? That's what we're taught when we're like in elementary school. Not that they, maybe there were, you know, there are benefits to it, don't get me wrong. What are some of the weaknesses? It stimulates cortisol. Cortisol, as you can see, it's, it's gonna increase your appetite. Cortisol is a, is a hormone, it's, it's a, you know how there's anabolic hormones which build up muscle? There's catabolic hormones which actually tear them down. So cortisol is, an, is, a, is a catabolic, so it causes more muscle breakdown. It causes you to actually break, break down muscle to utilize for energy. So that's, that's important. Um, it raises your endorphins. So the good thing about having raised endorphins is you feel better. You guys think of endorphins, you think of encephalons, they're, they're the same thing. Um, you're going to feel really good after you do this kind of exercise, but long term some of the negatives of it. So if you did this every day, you not only get to get to that point where you're stuck at the level with the pooch, but you're, you're not very healthy. Um, you, you're better than nothing, don't get me wrong. Um, it's going to, cat catabolically, it increases fat storage. So you can see why you hit such a level. It reduces your testosterone, and it does mess with your immune system. You guys know people who go and they have a day where they, they might do a 10K or they do a 15K or they do like a half marathon, and the next day, the next week, their immune system's terrible. They catch every cold around. They're sick all the time. One of my, my patients from Florida when I was down there, um, she did a, a, an Ironman. And it took her two or three weeks after the Ironman to get her energy back, to get her vitality back. She had runny nose. I mean, it was, it was awful. So exercise-wise, it does affect your immune system. So it's important not to overdo it with, the, with the, the cardio. Make sense? So next time somebody tells you you got to go run a 10K every day, you can use some of this research. Good. 
So what are the benefits? Because is there something good about cardio? I'm not saying cardio is all bad. There's definitely benefits. So benefit-wise, um, it's going to improve your heart rate. Um, it's going to help with LDL, HDL. Why is HDL important? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So HDL, how does it act in the body? What, what's it, how is it good for? Yeah, also lower LDL. So HDL, if you can think of it, it's like the pipe cleaner. So it goes through the veins, it goes through the arteries, and it completely cleans them out. It takes anything, and, and it's so that's what HDL is important for. Very, very simple, but yet important. Um, it helps to, this type of exercise helps to lower blood pressure, helps to, keep, helps to improve circulation, and also it helps with detoxification. So a lot of you guys will come in and you'll have a cold, you'll have an ache, you'll have something, and I'll tell you, hey, go do some brisk walking, do, go do some light exercise, not because I want to overdo your immune system, but I do want to help your body to detoxify, to get rid of lymph. If, for example, though, instead of doing the you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of walking, you go and do two hours of long distance running, your immune system is going to be actually worse than it was before. So you want to, you got to, we've got to kind of calibrate it um, so you can know how to do exercise the best. Because that's our goal here, is to get you to a higher level. We're going to give you guys the edge. That's, that's what we're talking about today. Um, so how do you get the benefits without the negatives? You burst train to burn fat. So this is what we're talking about. It's called surge training. It's called burst training. Um, it's a whole different way to work out. Um, it's very, very awesome. So this is one of the tools you can use as an exerciser. You don't have to use that. I bought one from Walmart that, that worked for a little bit, but I didn't like it. The exercises you can do with this, you can do jogging. You can do sprinting basically in place. You can do jump rope. You can do like jump, jumping jacks. Basically, any exercise you can do fast. You know what I mean? That you can do at a high level. So you know how when you, you were taught things and you go to like, even on your, some of the ellipticals and things, they have the fat burning zone? And it's calibrated based on a percentage of your maximum heart rate. So they say in that, that burning zone, it's like 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. So you're in there and you're like, I'm in the fat burning zone, I'm burning fat. You're burning fat when you exercise. We're going to talk about that that's the long term, not, not burning fat in your body. This is, I'm talking about, higher percentage of energy. Intensity wise, you're up there 80, 90% of your maximum heart rate. So we don't all have the same maximum heart rate. I'm not saying that if you're just starting out, you should be going as, as, you know, as hard as you can. Um, if you're pretty in good shape, you can, go, you can go crazy for this. You can really go for it. The higher the intensity, the better the results. But at the same time, go within your own ability. Do you know what I mean? Don't want to have anybody croaking. But, um, so this is really important. So, so what is it? How does burst training work? The actual timing of it is very important. So the, the, the minimum amount of time you can do is 20 seconds. So if you were to do it, you're going to do 20 seconds all out, 20 second rest. Simple? The next part of it, 20 second all out, 20 second rest. Got it? Next one, 20 second all out, two minute rest. That's one burst. Most people for their workout, they do three. If you want to do longer durations, if you're, if you're in pretty good shape, you would do 30 seconds, then 30 seconds. 30, 30, 32 minutes. The timing is very important. There's a lot of research on it. We're going to go through a little bit of it here. So what, what kind of things, well, does everybody want to stand up and we'll practice, we'll do one together? Get up, get up. I've been, we've been learning a lot about learning, and that when you hear it, you retain 10%. When you write it, it's 20%. When you, actually partic when you participate, it's higher. When you teach somebody else, it's higher. So tonight, when you go home, if you can teach somebody about it, if you can talk about some of the stuff we covered today, you're going to retain it versus saying, oh, yeah, I went to that seminar. So exercise-wise, your options. You can do jumping jacks. You can kind of run quickly in place. Um, you can run slower in place, depending on your thing. Um, some people, they want to do push-ups. So we're going to go all out. Anybody have a, have a watch on? They can time it. We're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to do, how many bursts do you guys want to do? One. <laughs> Three? All right, so we're going to do anywhere from, from one to, to two. So we're going to go all out for 30 seconds. We're going to have a rest so you guys can, and you're going to feel how it feels, and we're going to go all out. If, if you're in shape to go for it, you want to go to a point where it, it actually burns. So we're, I'm going to be running in place. I'm going to look really funny on, on video. Um, get yourself some space. So are you guys ready? You guys excited you came here to do this? So. Ready? Ten seconds. Count it down, Steph. Five. All right, four, you ready? Three. Okay. Two. All right, go. Go, go as fast as you can. <laughs> oh. I got a cramp. I got a cramp. <laughs> All right, come on, Steph. <laughs> What's that? Fifteen more seconds. All right. What? Oh, only ten seconds? Oh my God. This is hard, right? <laughs> Ten more seconds? Oh god. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. 
Oh, oh my God. That was hard, right? Let's just do one. So we get 30 seconds. Give us 30 seconds of, bri- of uh, recovery time. No. That's quick, though. Yeah, Jess is working on those. How are we doing time wise, Steph? Uh, we've got three more seconds. We're okay. Go again. No. You had to go again? I, I've never seen people do two. You said they only do one. I feel kind of like Richard Simmons. I gotta get my short shorts. Alright, guys. Wow, you guys did awesome. Good job. Simple, right? So, like in my yard, I combine them differently. So I'll do, So because people say, I can't afford to work out, I don't have space, I can't drive to the gym. So in my yard, simple yard, we have a, an area that has the walkway with, yeah, with concrete. Yeah. So we t- I, take ju- I have a jump rope, I do, usually I do jump rope, I do mine a different. I actually do it until I can't do it any longer. Then I have a station where I put a t-shirt on the ground, do push-ups until I can't do them any longer, do sit-ups, about 10 because I can't do sit-ups that well. I get up, do a sprint to the backyard, backyard, do jumping jacks. I do take some breathing in there, and I go back. So in 10, 12, 15 minutes, I can get a serious workout in. Yep. What are you doing in bad weather? I, well, I used to go to the rink. I do also do Planet Fitness. We'll talk about the plan. This is, you can do it on elliptical. You're at the gym, you want to do elliptical, you can go all out for 20 seconds. Um, you can do it on a treadmill. I mean, you can do it in your house. My friend has a video online, which I can forward to you guys. He does, he does the same thing we just did. He does that. He does his push-ups. He does a five-minute workout. It's intense, though, right? I mean, it's not. It, but at the same time, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you. And when you think about it in terms of how long we've been on Earth, regardless of the, of the, the time period, we were meant to run from predators. We weren't here to go run a marathon. So our bodies are still ready to have short, intense intervals to get in good shape. So make sense? Let's go to the next one. All right, I feel like we did something now. Which one's better for health? We may have uh, chosen the pictures at our own, our own will here. Yeah. So look at it. Look at this guy. He's a marathon runner. He looks like death. You have your... <laughs> you right? have a little pitchfork there. Um, you have this guy who's ripped. So which one's better for health? Lean muscle. Yeah, so when you train, do you want to train like a sprinter or do you want to train like a mall walker? This guy is a mall walker. It's, it's kind of goofy, but that's how you get your results. So if you ever look at your results and you see why aren't my results where I want to be, you got to look what you're doing. Not just in exercise, but in life. So the truth, this is some of the awesome things. So mall walker or weight trainer? Um, the MMR and calorie expenditure. So people used to think that it was about how long you worked out for and that's not the case. They, want it, they say it's about the intensity. It doesn't matter. You can go run for an hour. I can do the same work in a fourth of the time. Hormonally, I'm going to have more growth hormone. I'm going to have more testosterone released. I'm going to have less cortisol released. Who's going to get a better result? Yeah, so that's, that's what we're saying. And there's a lot of myths out there. So let's go to the next one. Um, so this is a pretty cool one. And they go through a lot of different studies. You can see about it. Um, Regardless of, and over and over again, regardless of the fuel source, they're saying you're getting better results. So what are they saying there? They're saying that, so we did a sprint. We were burning sugar when we did the sprint. So when you're in, in, in the really intense, you burn more sugar. But in the recovery phase, and after that, your body burns more fat. The studies are pretty cool. Whereas when you were on the treadmill before in the fat burning zone, you may have been burning fat when you were working out. The second you stopped hormonally, you're releasing cortisol, your body's only going to be burning sugar, you're, you're not getting the results you wanted. So the, the studies are coming through. It's, it's pretty cool to see. You can see rapid changes too. If anybody wants to get on a program with me, I've been kind of letting myself go here so I can get, get caught up <laughs> with you guys. So, no, not get caught up with you guys, so we can get together and get in great shape. All right. So you can see here, high intensity again. We can go through study after study. Let's go to the next one. Um, if you guys want any of these studies, we can give it to you. Um, positive relationship between burning carbohydrates, burning sugar when you work out, and then burning fat when you're resting. So again, like we said, 80 to 90% of our, of, our, of our highest heart rate, or maximum heart rate. So when you're doing it, that's what you want to do. If you want to get a heart rate calculator, or if you want to get one of those monitors, um, that's a good way to monitor where you're at. 
That way you don't overdo it. Um, you could also just kind of find your training zones with that. Um, if you look at the gyms, it's based, you can look at age, body weight, you can calculate out that way, or you can get the monitor. Um, we talked about this, right? So the best time. Morning, what are the reasons? Somebody teach me. Why, why are we working out in the morning? Yes, got it. What else is going on in the morning? Why are we working out in the morning? Best compliance, testosterone. You also have your, your insulin is the lowest, so that's going to aid in, your, in your terms of like how your body reacts. Um, it's going to get the metabolism cranking. Have you guys ever seen a day where you work out in the morning? Most of the day you're energized, your, your skin's good. The day you don't work out in the morning, you're kind of sluggish, you're kind of half asleep. Exercise is much better than coffee, right? Excellent. I think we're almost done. Down one more. Okay, we're, yeah, we're going to skip, skip, keep it down again. Oh, yeah, you can just, just inject the coffee. No. no I, I'm not a coffee person. I'm a green tea person, if any. Keep going down. We're going to skip all the supplements. We're not going to talk about supplements today. We can talk about that later. This is the thing you guys said. You guys matched up with all the different um, studies. This is from Time Magazine. Um, so why do people exercise right here? What are the benefits? Improved overall health, control weight, get stronger, you know, looking good, being better in everything, every other area. Um, <laughs> why we didn't do it. So we just, we just kind of took this whole thing and we just found ways to make it fun. So looking at when people say, the one that jumps out there, health related reasons, that makes sense still. Talk with us, we'll help you set up a, a plan for your particular health reason. Other than that, we can change all those. Time wise, if you did a four minute workout or a five minute workout, do you have time for that? Can you do that at home? Even if you're, I mean, in the stuff we're doing is simple. What if, what if you don't like sprinting in place? What if you say that's just, that's just lame? You find something you like. Do you like jump roping? You can get your, your kids, if you have children who are involved, they can run with you. You can carry them on, they can carry them on your, your back. You can have them, like when you're doing push-ups, we put the dogs on us sometimes. I mean, it's, it adds resistance. Um, too expensive. It's basically free. There are some gyms in the area. They have, they have different gyms now where they're doing more hardcore stuff. They have very little weights. They're just doing like pull-ups and um, CrossFit. Have you guys seen those yet? Those, the, you'll see the workouts online if you look up CrossFit. It's insane, the stuff they're doing. I mean, they're doing like tractor tires. They're, they're abusing themselves. So you can take it to the extreme, though. Um, so next slide. So what fits into your busy schedule better? Exercising one hour a day or being dead for 24 hours a day? <laughs> that's, and that's the reality for some people. Um, let's go to the next slide. We're going to make it simple, though. So basically, the, the, the other joke there was exercising 24 hours a day or it was going to four minutes a day. So we all have time for that. We, we don't have time for being dead 24 hours a day, right? Excellent. So we're going to go into this one now. Um, you're going to just kind of click. There you go. Beautiful. So down one. So smoothie-wise, that's going to be coming out. You've got some samples back here. Um, again, we like to get you guys involved in it so you can kind of taste the smoothie. You can like feel the smoothie. You can see it. You can have it. Um, so you guys can do this at home. As far as blender-wise, we use a Vitamix to make ours. Our Vitamix, you can make cashew butter, almond butter. You can, you can take you know, pebbles from your yard. You can grind them into like <laughs> dust. I mean, this, this, thing is, this thing is insane. You can do anything you want with it. So I love the Vitamix. It's my version of a chainsaw. One, one of our friends, he came over the chainsaw and he was just like, ah, I'm the Vitamix man. So samples are coming around. Um, what do I put in my smoothie? Right here. Um, and it's simple. Yep. What's the red kind? What I said red kind. Um, let me grab. I got... The red kind I used to get from Target, and then Target decided to stop carrying it. Yeah. So now we get, this is the one I get from, this is an old one actually from one of my other talks. We get this from Tops. This is the Thai one. There's also a green one. It's an organic one. Sometimes Tops has it. Sometimes Wegmans has it. Um, pretty good. Just simple coconut milk. You can also use it for baking, for cooking. This can replace milk in almost every recipe. Um, it can replace, like, if you're making, like, some kind of Alfredo, you can use coconut. I mean, you have a lot of options. There's a cool book called How Coconut Saves, is Going to Save the World. Um, you can use this stuff for everything. Coconut milk is great. Is there coffee in the morning? Yeah, they have a Green Star. They have a coconut creamer. I think I, I yeah, he just threw me up a, like a lob. I'm just, no, coconut creamer is really good. Jess has been drinking it, and she's, she's, she loves it. She's pretty picky with her coffee stuff. So. Um, so coconut milk, what's the good thing about that? It has really good fats in it. The closest good fat thing, well, it's got amazing good fats. It's going to help you guys burn weight. It's going to help make you that fat burner, so you're burning at steady, steady energy throughout the day. Um, Taste-wise, yeah, it's a pretty tasty shake, right? Mm -hmm. How long does the coconut milk last for once you open it? I open mine. Um, you, can, you can transfer it to like a glass container would be best. 
mine, I do about a third a can per day. I do the same thing every day. Maybe weekends I might take a break because we go to brunch on Sunday. But it lasts, for me, it lasts three to five days. If you go on vacation, it gets a little funky. But you'll, I mean, you'll be able to tell for sure. Um, coconut milk is awesome. I can't say enough about it. Um, Strawberry-wise, you can estimate there. Blueberries. Um, what are the good things about these kind of berries? Yes. Huge level of antioxidants. High antioxidant number. Low glycemic index, so they don't have a lot of sugar. The smaller the fruit, the better. Basically, the smaller the fruit, the more ratio of peel to fruit. So that means your body's going to have it's going to be less sugar. Like you said, antioxidants, it's going to help to just detoxify your body, going to help for anti-aging, help to get your, your skin to cleanse. Um, huge. So those two are really good. Um, I use organic carrots. This one we did organic baby carrots. Um, we just put some in there. And you'll taste it. They don't taste like anything. You know, they're just like a texture. This one's actually a little different, Brian. Okay. Um, Did you put squash in there? There's squash. And yeah. baby carrots, and there's no strawberries or blue. There are two different kinds. Mix. The one you just had had carrots and greens, um, almond milk, cucumber. Cucumber. No. Zucchini. 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 Banana? Zucchini. Yes. Yeah. There's another kind over here that um, doesn't have any carrot, but it has a lot more green. And it's actually, I think it's better. Really? We made less of it. So if you guys want to try that second one, it's right here. So you guys can see the recipes can be whatever you want to put in there. You just basically, we have a CSA. We just, whatever Keith Thompson gives us, we put it into our smoothies. I mean, it, it tastes incredible. You can put a lot of greens in there, too. You can put like a whole handful of spinach. You won't taste it. So people always ask me, how do you get little kids to eat vegetables? The smoothie is one of the best ways. If you put enough berries in there, the kids won't even taste it. If you also get into like the powder that makes chocolate, you know, like the carob, you can really make some cool stuff. Um, you can start using stevia as a sweetener if, you're, if it's not sweet enough for you. I mean, you can do a lot with this. And for a lot of people, this is what they do every morning. And then out of your three meals, that's one that's super healthy. For me, I do, at lunch, I do a salad with either some kind of like, we do our eggs from our chickens because we have healthy chickens, um, or I do some kind of protein on there. That's two out of three healthy meals. So then at night, if we end up, yep, go ahead. Is this, this what you have for breakfast now? Every day. One glass. I do. All. Yeah. But, I mean, it's got a lot. Of, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Um, I do. Yep. I, I, I do, like, a quarter of a cup of fruits a day. It's because you're in your full. stomach, like, wrong. It's great. You yeah. Full. You're going to feel full. And you're going to feel, you're going to feel light. You could do it at lunch instead, yeah. I usually tell people not to do multiple per day because, I mean, you don't want to get into, like, the slim fast mode where you, you don't know how to eat anymore. You're just, like, drinking a shake. They're drinking a shake and, like, having dinner. I mean, there's a benefit to that because it's simple and it's easy, but it doesn't, like, nutrients of slim fast is nowhere near with it. This is going to have real food in it. It's going to be alive. Um, so I have a, my blue smoothie cups. You guys have, some of you guys have heard about this. So I have these special smoothie cups that fit in my car. So I, I make my shake. It takes me, you know, like, what, a minute, two minutes, pour it into the smoothie cup, and I'm just gone in the car with it. So then it gets all crusty from sitting around all day. But um, it's easy. It's, it's fast. Yeah. One of, my, one of my friends has a video of himself making the smoothie and drinking it in 43 seconds. 43 seconds. He's like, now don't tell me you don't have time for a healthy breakfast. It's really simple. So even if you did just coconut milk to start with and you did your, your berries, that's where everybody should start from. After that, you want to add in some greens. You just keep it simple. But that's, that's going to really, if you did that for 20 years, your health would be radically different. So we're looking for you when those last quality of years in our country, our quality of life, we lose on average 22 healthy years. 22 healthy years per person we lose. So for guys, we make it to 78. For women, we make it to 80. They say the last 22 years, we have very low quality of life. So the simple stuff we go through in our office here is going to help you guys extend that. And quality of life, you can't, you can't get anything better than that. There's nothing more valuable than that. So looking through it, you can put in a lot of things. If I don't have um, the milks, like for some reason we're out of it, I usually go with real almonds and I'll put in water. You'd be surprised once you blend it up, if you have a good blender, you're good to go. I used to have an old school blender. It was a piece of crap I got in college. It worked fine. The Vitamix, it just sounds louder, so I think it's cooler. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys who are motorcycle and car people, you know that. Like the, the louder it gets, like the better, the better it is. So let's go to the next one. We're going to talk a little bit about pH. Today was mostly about exercise. Um, I think you guys know how to burst now. You, you know, you're going to see on the website the options you have. I'll be sending you guys some different, some different emails on it. Um, alkalinity is very important. We talked about how to energize. The more alkaline you are, the less acidic you are, the more energy you're going to have. So this is one thing that's really simple again. It's just lemon water. Basically, you have your water, you squeeze lemon in it. You can put as much lemon as you want, you can put as little lemon as you want. 
the benefits, it's going to help your body to form more bile. It's going to help you with digestion. Um, people ask me all the time, well, it's lemon. Lemon's acidic. How does that make your body alkaline? It's based on how your body breaks it down. So your body forms more, more OH molecules, more hydroxyl groups to make your body more alkaline. So lemon water is essential. Um, if you go to the store, you buy a little thing of organic lemons, you're good to go. I don't like the squeeze thing, the squeeze lemon. Yep. Only lemon. I mean, there's lime. Lime's great too. Yep. Lime's perfect. Oranges, they're not as good. They're a little bit less. Um, but very good question. You have more questions? Are good. Yep. What if you have a mother that's on a lot of medication? Is that something that she can take? Would she have to ask the doctor? Um, I mean, I would. If you want me to, if you want to like write down her her medications and, and we can look it up to see if it interacts. Yeah. That's the tough thing. If somebody's on a lot of medications, most of the time, your doctors don't really know what's going on anyways. Yeah. No offense. Like, they know the medication are there for, 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 for what they're trying to treat, but if you're taking five to plus medications, biochemically, there's no science telling you that it's okay. Yeah. We have science on one medication at a time. Those studies are done in healthy people of, you know, the average size, good weight. They're done by a company that's promoting them. So most of the time, if you're taking multiple, I think that the more healthy things you can do within reason, the better. So... I would definitely, if you, if you want to bring in her list and let us talk to her, we'd love to, to figure out some natural things you can do. Yes, sir? I take a lot of medications. Yep. Anywhere it's up from 8 to 10 to 15 medications yeah. every day. And I still do this, and it, yeah. it doesn't hurt you at all. Yeah, I do probably, smoothies with uh, yeah. vegetables and fruit, nice. blueberries, bananas, stuff like that. And it's delicious. I tell you, I lost, and I don't exercise much because of my disability. Yeah. And I lost actually 20, uh, I went from two. 90-something, now I weigh 268. Pretty awesome. That's, so keep, keep going. We, we have a, a guy, um, we had a, it's, a, it's one of my friend's offices in Texas. He was going for a complete replacement of his heart. He went on the, our, our healing diet, which is on our website. He didn't do any exercise. And he's on the, he's on a testimony video of him saying, I didn't do any exercise. So exercise is important, but he just did the healing diet, which is on our thing. It's very little dairy, you know, no gluten. Um, he actually cleared out all of his arteries. He went to, to his cardiologist and they said, well, what have you been doing? And, and they, they said, it looks like you have new, new, new veins, new pipes, new everything. So this can, it's very profound. It's, it's, and this is how your body's designed to heal. You're designed to heal naturally. So the more natural stuff you can do, the longer you're going you're gonna to be healthy for. Um, so let's go to the next one. Good work. So these are the questions people always ask me. Well, what percentage should I do? Um, so we have, we have handouts that we do for, for alkalinity and acid. And we just, we just have charts. Ideally, you'd be getting the majority of your foods from an alkali alkaline source. So you're going to look on the chart. You're going to see on the left side is going to be alkaline. The right side is going to be acidic. Also on our web page, we have a lot of this stuff that tells you. So you can kind of balance out your foods. If you're going to have a day where you're eating a lot of protein, you want to have a lot of greens with it. Even if you're doing squash, you're doing spinach, you're doing, you want to really balance it. So if, you, if you're, yeah, you want to just pass them around there? Thank you. So we just printed some on pink today. You can see the chart. It, it makes it really easy. So we go by category. Your alkaline foods are over there. Your acidic foods are over there. Again, you're going to have categories like, you know, your grains, where the majority of them are going to be acidic. You do have some alkaline ones, though. So there are a lot of people who go from, you know, here I'm eating white flour, white rice. They change it over to eating more like quinoa, to more about some, to more like, you know, the, the non-alkaline ones. They're going to see a huge difference in their health. Um, simple stuff. Very small changes. We call them lateral shifts, where you're not taking all your food and throwing it out. You're just buying something a little bit different. You know what I mean? Yep. You may get to add to it, but I just think that you mentioned about two or three. Yeah. Like yeah. Plant, Not a whole lot today. Um, for me, what, what, what me and Stephanie do, we're gluten free in the morning. Stephanie and I, we've, we've banded together to increase our energy. So you'll notice that in the morning, well, when I'm, basically before I'm working on people, when I'm working on people, because for me, I eat gluten, I get kind of tired and I get like, kind of like not focused. So I don't eat gluten in the morning. Usually don't eat gluten at lunch. At dinner, I might have some gluten. But I'm one of those people because I'm so usually pale or whatever my reason is, I don't tolerate gluten that well. It makes me tired. Um, so there's a lot of gluten-free options. Um, we can definitely, if you want any literature on that, we can get you a ton. But um, you're going to notice that the majority of the ones that are alkaline are not going to have much gluten in them. So good question. Um, yeah. So how does this stuff help with detoxification? How does alkalinity versus acidity help with detoxification? The more acid you have in your body, the harder it's going to be for your body to, to detoxify. The more your bile is going to, or your, well, your, your lymph system is going to be kind of clogged. Your lymph is kind of like the, the drainage, it's a sewer system for the body. The more acidic, acidity you have, the more it's going to be clogged. So you have a lot of people who have lymph nodes that are the areas where they get cancer. Because one lymph nodes are the area that's 
draining the toxins. Two, as it's getting clogged with acidic things, it's almost like sludge. Versus you see like a waterfall, like a nice free-flowing waterfall, instead of like sludgy, nasty water, it's getting clogged. So that's a place where there's going to be unhealthy cells. Doctors will tell you almost all of your cancers are bathed in different, different acids. So when we change these things, it seems small, but every cell in your body is getting healthier. You're going to be more, more focused, more, more energized. Um, so it's pretty good stuff. Um, yeah. So how about nutrient score? Have you guys heard of that? Let's go down to the next one. So this is one quick little article. A little, this is one of the ones we sent out on the email. So they're starting to rate the foods on nutrient scores. Because um, we, we used to think, yeah, we used to eat for calories. And people would say you had to get X number of calories. And now what they're saying is that calorie-wise, that's not what your body wants. Your body doesn't care so much about calories. It cares about nutrients. So you'll notice if you go and you eat really unhealthy food, oftentimes in an hour, you're craving more and more food. So if at night you're craving sweets all the time, a lot of times your body is craving things like fruits and vegetables. You know what I mean? So it's craving vitamin C. So if you're one of those people that has to have sugar every night, um, yeah, so nutrient score. I got off track. So what has the highest nutrient scores? Your green leafy vegetables. Your kale, your bok choy, all this stuff is awesome. Spinach, you can put that right in your smoothie. So do you guys remember, was it the Wheaties commercial? What was it? The corn, was it? No, which one was it? Where they had, like, you had to eat X number of bowls. Total, there we go. Total-wise, you had to have, what is it, like 20 bowls of the other cereal to equal one bowl of total. So we did that with oatmeal. So oatmeal-wise, they have a score of 53. So to equal one bowl of kale, you have to eat 20 bowls of oatmeal to get the same nutrient level. So when you look at the acidity, oatmeal is also more acidic. So the more nutrient-dense foods you can get in your body, the better. And if you can find creative ways to do it, that's optimal. You'll notice in our office we have our recipe book where we make it really easy to make healthy recipes. Um, we have some recipes online. So if you want any of that stuff, let us know. We're here to be a resource to you. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, what about the, the pH balance and, and where bacteria and viruses live? Where do they choose to live? In an acidic environment or an alkaline environment? Yeah, simple, right? So basically, people say, well, I caught a cold, I caught a virus. You developed an environment in your body that was an area for them to live. I know it sounds kind of maybe almost mean. We have people in our office that are teachers that they deal with, they're around kids all the time, they never get sick. Yet the next person who goes in the room gets sick. Or you have two kids that come home from school and they say one coughed on the other. Meanwhile, the, the son has the cold for you know, three months, the daughter had the cold for two days. It's not the viruses, it's the environment. And the stuff we teach you here helps strengthen your environment, strengthen you to stay well. Not only from colds and viruses, but long-term things. So it's pretty cool to see. Um, what role does it have in inflammation? Basically, we explain inflammation simply as cell damage. Your body tries to heal that damage in a certain way, but um, yeah, we're not gonna get too far into that because I don't think you guys have questions. This is gonna reduce your inflammation, gonna help your body heal a lot faster. Um, what areas do these problems go to first? So if you eat a lot of acidic diet, where do they go? Yes, that's the first place you digest, yes. In terms of where they end up, it's based on your genetic, usually to your genetic area of genetic weakness. That's what people explain. So if you eat the exact same way as your parents did, and you have the same lifestyle, you're going to have the same problems. Like my grandmother, it breaks my heart. At 40 and, and beyond, she was in her, her living room chair sitting there with type 2 diabetes. I mean, she had a miserable health. She was unhappy, she couldn't move, she couldn't get up and walk. Um, if we look at it, our family, if we live that same lifestyle, we have the genetics to go there. A lot of the doctors talk about genes are the, are the loaded gun, your lifestyle is what pulls the trigger. So 3%, 3 to 5% of our disease is based on genes. So it's about how we live though. Because you have the same people who you see one twin who's you know, in great shape, the other twin who's in terrible shape. So we have a lot of choices. And with the stuff we're taught today, you guys can change your health really fast. So if you think of people you know in the community who maybe don't know any of this stuff, go teach them it. You're going to learn it better. You're going to start, you know, get people together with you with your workouts. Um, can you reverse cell damage? Can you guys reverse cell damage? Yeah, that's one of the things that we know a million percent in our office. Your body's designed to heal. You have 100 to 120 years of potential health in your body. You're supposed to heal. If there's a part that's not healing, something's blocking it, or you're not getting the right thing to make it better. We work to restore the nerve function to help your body heal. We also work to help you with lifestyle seminars like this to get you to get the information so you can, you can do it. Make sense? So you can 100% heal. We have testimony after testimony when you guys talk to people coming through here. We see cool things happening in people's health. So let's go to the next one. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we help people. So some of the really neat studies coming out, they talk about things like cytokines, 
which are cell signal molecules when your body's having too much cell damage, they're elevated. They've shown with just the adjustment alone, just me adjusting your spine, it reduces cytokines. So it's kind of cool. They look at people um, with CD4 cells and people with AIDS. They've seen studies that under adjustments, they've had higher levels. Their, their immune system has been better off. So those, the adjustments you guys are, are getting, all of you guys almost here, almost all of your patients, the adjustments you're getting are huge. Not only do they affect the things you guys have heard about in terms of headache and back pain and kind of the boring stuff, they affect your immune system. They affect your genes even. There's studies that say that we improve your DNA repair, we improve your serum thiols, meaning your body's going to heal faster. You're going to be living longer. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the, so let's get off chiropractic and go back to speeding your reaction time. These are some of the athletes that use chiropractic. From, I mean, you can go through almost every NFL team has a chiropractor. <laughs> Um, a lot of these guys are becoming controversial. I don't know if they got adjusted, like, they adjusted their atlas the wrong way, like Barry Bonds and like our, our senator or our governor there, but um, it's pretty awesome. So studies have shown that your reaction time is much faster with chiropractic care. So if your children are athletes, if they're soccer players, whatever it is, it makes more sense to have their nerves free from interference, to have their spine properly aligned. Even if you're a race car driver, whatever your occupation is, if you just drive fast on the highway, you should be getting adjusted. Um, you can see, so it's, it's kind of cool to watch. And when you look at, like, Jerry Rice, a lot of the ones I sent on the, the um, when I was sending out the emails to remind you, they have really cool testimonials. Does anybody remember Harry Carson? He was a linebacker for the Giants. He, he has, it's, there's so many neat chiropractic stories from all these athletes. It's, it's unbelievable. So let's, let's, we're getting to the end of this here. So what's your plan? I'm actually doing well for time. I think I, I've taken the, the shorter time, and I've just talked a lot faster. You guys may have noticed that, right? <laughs> All right. So what's your, what's your, we had that workout, man. I'm ready to rock. Um, what's your plan? You guys know this, you guys who, are, who, who, who deal with this stuff. If you don't have a plan, how's it going to work out? If you fail the plan, you plan to fail. You guys know this stuff. So what's your plan with your health? Where are you going to get natural health care to help you live longer? It's great to have a crisis care system that saves your life, and we have the best crisis care in the world. But if you're not doing things to naturally strengthen your body to do health care, to get yourself healthier, if you're not doing to strengthen yourself and do self-care, then you don't have a good plan. And we're here because we're passionate. We care about you. We want to see you guys live long and healthy. I love when people tell me, hey, we had a person today who's, who, before they came in, they weren't going to have another child. And today the woman's like, well, either, well, I, anyways, it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's she, something that she might, anyways. It's so cool to watch people and to watch their lives change and to see them getting better and, and more alive. Um, so I think everybody here should be a chiropractic patient. If not here, I can find you a chiropractor, a good one, because we, we train with a lot of them, we teach a lot of them things, well, we run a lot of seminars. Um, so here's my plan for a lot of my stuff. Um, for my workouts, like in the morning, 6.15, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because we have early mornings, I try to do my 15 minute burst, where in the morning where I'm just out there running, or I take, take Patty, my dog, out for, for a quick you know, run. Um, you can see Tuesday, Thursday, usually that's when I go to Planet Fitness, I do like 40 minutes of resistance. You guys don't have to do crazy stuff like I do, I mean, you can, you can, but you have to develop your own plan. So even if it was just two days, what you need to have is your time, what you're going to be doing, and who maybe your accountability partner is. I l yep. Do you have this, like, for an example, like a copy of it? Yeah, that's what we'll be having. Um, I'm going to make basically a half sheet of paper um, that's going to say my plan. It's going to go through the different areas and have you areas to write in. I've just been kind of crazy lately um, with things. Um, but yeah, so it goes through that. Uh, usually Saturday, Sunday, I do take the dogs for a run. Um, we're with the resistance training, if you guys have questions on that, I can show you different websites in terms of what you should be doing. Um, we can get you plugged in there. Um, we also have plans in terms of like spiritual time or relaxation time or time for yourself. That's very important, especially if you're parents. If you're young parents, if you're old parents, You've got to set aside times every week to do your own thing, to be away from people, to get relaxed and to breathe. If you don't, you're going to notice your hair is falling out, you're falling apart, you're stressing, you're coming here and you're screaming about your kids. I mean, I have one woman who, every time she comes in, she's screaming about her son. She need, I try to, try to coach her on this stuff because it's important. Um, but again, having an accountability partner is so important. It's hard to do all this stuff by yourself. That's why I love when I see couples and families and people coming together because if you're going to get healthier, if you don't have your family support, you're not going to be here very long. You're not going to be doing healthy stuff very long. You're going to go back to what you were doing. And it bothers me when people stop coming in or when they stop doing this healthy stuff. But that's, that's usually how it goes. Um, how about sleep? How many of you guys know what nights you want to stay up late? Well, every night, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do it each week, if you can try to do it, it sounds so simple and so brainless, but we have certain nights, Jess and I, that we like to either, like, we don't have TV, so we'll go to our parents' house and we'll watch TV, 
or we'll like you know like watch it in the DVD. But it's only certain nights. It's not every night. So you got to plan this stuff out. And if you do it, and you know the next day you can sleep in well, or you're gonna have like a more relaxed day, that can really help. Um, affirmations. How many of you guys do affirmations? We got a few here. I'm not gonna do any in front of you. We're not gonna do it as a group. But these are positive things you say, you write down, you think about to reprogram yourself. How many of us have crap that happened in our life? Yes. We talk about, you guys have heard things about how we all, we all carry around our bucks of crap with us. We just carry it around. With the affirmations, that reprograms our mind and our body to let go of that stuff, to, 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 to think better, to think more positively. And it seems, you know, it seems like, why should I do that? If you start doing it, you'll be happy you did. You will see awesome, awesome changes. Goal-wise, you guys, have you guys heard this? Either you plan for your dreams or you get what's left over. With our goals, I do post-it notes. I do right by my bed. I have goals. Try to read them once a day, twice a day. Three, hardcore people read them three times a day. And it's either you're, you're, you're going towards your goals and, and you're, you're just kind of grateful for it and you're moving in that direction, or you kind of just plug along and you kind of get stuck. So if I can encourage you to do any of this stuff, if I can ask, answer any of your questions on any of this stuff, we're here to, to open up and to tell you anything we have to know about it. If I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll go look it up for you and we'll find it. Um, we're here for you. We want to support you and your family to get well and make a big difference. Um, and I think that's, that's it on time. Yeah. Questions? What about that insanity workout? Insanity? The one, the, the one? The insanity, the 60 day workout. Oh, the one that's online? Yeah. I've, I've not read through all of it. Is it, what's it entail? Mostly um, just using your body, no weights. Right. It's just like hardcore for like 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get results if you have that kind of intensity. I don't know. I would, I would start with the burst, and I would start with you know, 15 minutes. Um, I also see people that do the insanity workouts, and then they come in here, and they're falling apart. We, we have a lot of people, you know, like, so I would try to do it in, an, in, a, in a controlled, intelligent way. I'm not saying it's not intelligent, but it's depending on your level. If you, if you, were, an, if you were, like, a pretty good athlete, and you're going to do the insanity thing, I think it'd be great. If you're just starting out, I think doing it, even a burst at 60% of your, your peak rate, rate and then working up to 70% and working your, your time from 20 seconds up to 30 seconds. And if you, do it on, if you have it on paper and you have it planned out, you can really have this, because this is a lifestyle thing. I think the insanity thing, it's like, okay, do this for 45 days, and then people that make it, they're really happy, and the people that don't, they're another thing that didn't work. I want to have positive things you do and you get results. But very good question. Anybody else? That's a couple more? All right. I've said it all. So. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate you guys. Um, if you want resources, our website, ithcachiropractic.com, we have a ton of resources. Um, we have this video, when we get done with it, will be on there. Um, we have another video of our raw food talk. As we go through, we're putting more resources. We want it to be a free, easy way for you guys to get well. If you're not patients here, get your butts in here. Basically, <laughs> what we do is if you want to come in the next two weeks, we find you a time. We make it at no charge. We do your initial exam. We have two cool thermal, we have a thermal scan we're doing. We have, an, we have all kinds of cool tests we're doing. We're going to find ways to get you well and keep you well. So if you don't want to come in, don't come in. If you want to bring your whole family, bring your family. You can see our office is pretty much, we're getting full. We're going to have a new chiropractor hopefully shortly. And things are, yep, Gordy. Oh, I thought you had a question. Things are going great. So um, thank you. And yeah, have some smoothie and let's hang out or let's get home.